Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 48. In this training module, we're going to be taking a look at integrating our knock control with our Haltech Elite on our engine so that we're able to detect when a knock condition occurs. And we can utilize this for tuning and calibration purposes, also for long-term safety protection if we get a bad tank of gas or we get into a situation where we have knock occur, it'll save our engine. So we definitely want to utilize knock control whenever possible. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check out working with our knock control. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control within our Haltech Elite systems using our NSP software. Our knock control is something that we absolutely want to implement on any engine we're trying to tune. Whether it's going to be a piston engine or a rotary engine, we can implement knock control correctly and we can use that as a fail-safe protection so that if we have a knock event happen, we can retard the timing, reducing the cylinder pressure and then therefore reducing the knock event from happening. And then we also can use it to guide us in tuning our spark timing values in our spark timing table. Now I haven't really talked about the process of tuning spark timing um, very much in the last few tutorials. I'm going to touch on it here in this tutorial. I'm going to tell you how to actually go about dealing with working with the knock sensor, looking at the log data, and determining how much further we're able to advance our spark timing in our spark timing table. So we typically rely on knock sensor information at higher load, higher throttle angle situations. So if we're getting into essentially full throttle, we look at our knock sensor to show us what's going on. We can implement knock control even in part throttle. Most times we don't need to worry about it very much. If we're at light throttle angles, not so much of a big deal, but definitely higher throttle angles, higher load, that's where the engine is going to have the greatest cylinder pressure and the greatest likelihood to have knock occur. So that's where the knock control really becomes critically important. Now we need to go and configure our knock control correctly in order to actually allow the system itself to be accurate and show us accurate information. We don't want to go take a look at knock control that isn't configured properly. Um, we'll have essentially jumbled data or data that's not going to be usable. So it's very important that we configure the details based on the engine we're working with, also based on the knock sensor. Often cases, sometimes different knock sensors will produce a different uh, dB level or the output level from the sensor itself. Um, and every engine's going to have a distinct, unique knock profile. So we're going to go about this kind of in a general approach to knock control. This is what I use for any engine that I'm working with. I always keep an open mind in terms of how the knock control values need to be set up and configured because no two engines will be alike. Definitely wanted to stress that because you could have even two stock engines and the knock profile sometimes can vary a bit. Okay, so to start off here, if you have an engine that has an old knock sensor or let's say you don't have a knock sensor at all in your engine or if you're just questioning the uh, integrity of your knock sensor, maybe it's super old, a lot of Toyotas, Nissans, um, Toyotas have a very loud knock sensor, sometimes unusable. Nissans have a very quiet knock sensor, oftentimes unusable. If you want to replace your sensor with something that's going to be a bit more robust, and uh, in my opinion, definitely the way to go when you're looking at a knock sensor is going to be a flat response style knock sensor. And this is going to be uh, the Bosch part number. It's a Bosch sensor. You can use the part number to search online, 026 one two three one one eight eight go on amazon they're about twenty dollars for that specific part number and uh, that's the knock sensor i always use now that knock sensor is a two wire knock sensor one wire will go to your knock number one input if you have a single knock sensor and then the other wire will go to a sensor ground the connector on the knock sensor itself is an ev1 style injector connector so if you're familiar with older gems or honda that's that specific injector connector that those used in the harnesses, that's exactly the same connector that, that would be used here for this specific Bosch flat response sensor. Now the sensor itself is going to be critical that's torqued properly. If we over torque the sensor, it can actually output false readings from the sensor. If we under torque it, we won't get much of any reading from the sensor. We want to torque it to about 12 to 14 pound feet of torque. So that is going to be really, really critical. Um, it's usually hand tight but if you're able to actually use a torque wrench, torque it to that spec, that'll be right about where it needs to be torqued at. Now the way that the knock sensor is going to work, if you're unfamiliar with this, is going to be a piezoelectric circuit. What it's doing is taking any pressure rippling through the block and it's going to be translating that into the sensor and the sensor is then going to be outputting a signal proportional to how much pressure the sensor is absorbing. So in the case of let's say actual knock will have a very distinct 
pressure wave that hits that sensor that will send a pretty large amplitude out of the sensor. And it's very clear when a knock event actually happens. So the Bosch flat response sensor here is my preferred sensor for any engine. It is a, uh, an OEM grade sensor, so it's not aftermarket. It's not questionable if it's gonna be a good sensor or not, typically out of the box. I've never had one bad. I cannot say enough good things about that specific part number sensor. So that's what I'm gonna recommend that you use. You can use OEM sensors, so you can use your original sensor on your engine if you don't feel like fitting a Bosch flat response sensor. However, you may have mixed results with the knock control. So let's jump in here and let's take a look at where we're gonna configure our knock sensor and knock detection first, and then we'll talk about all the other details that are associated to that. We'll talk about setting up our knock control area here. We'll talk about configuring our spark timing here, relying on looking at our knock sensor input. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.